Welcome to this Premier Training revision video that takes a look at accruals and prepayments. Many students find accruals and prepayments difficult concepts to grasp, and in this video we'll explore what they are and why they're needed. Let's start by considering the concept of accrual accounting that must be applied when preparing accounts. This important principle means that revenues and expenses are matched to the accounting period in which they're earned or incurred, and not when payment is received or made. You might ask why this is important. Well, it's all about timing. Each financial year, a business must produce a Statement of Profit or Loss, or SPL, which records the income earned and expenses incurred within that business's accounting period. And businesses must also produce a Statement of Financial Position, or SFP, which records its assets, liabilities and capital within that same period. But the timing of the transactions which relate to that accounting period will almost certainly never be the same as when the income is actually received or when payments are actually made. And this means we need to identify and deal with any income and expenses that fall outside of the accounting period. For example, to raise its revenue, a business may own some empty property that it decides to rent out. And when a business rents property, it will more than likely ask rent to be paid several months in advance. And any income received in advance of an accounting period is an example of prepaid income. And prepaid income appears as a liability on the Statement of Financial Position as it relates to income for goods and services that it has not yet delivered. Sticking for a moment with our example of rental income, if at the end of the same financial year we have another tenant who's in arrears with their rent in this accounting period, this would be an example of accrued income. That is, income that belongs to or has been earned in an accounting period but which has not been received. Accrued income appears as an asset on the Statement of Financial Position as it represents a future benefit to the company in the form of a future cash receipt. OK, so that's how income is dealt with, but what about expenses? Energy bills are usually paid in arrears, meaning a business's energy usage during one accounting period may not be billed and paid for until after the end of the accounting period the energy usage relates to. So, where a business has had the benefit of something in an accounting period that it hasn't yet paid for, this is an example of an accrued expense. And accrued expenses appear as a liability on the Statement of Financial Position, as it's something the business owes. Finally, there are some expenses a business will have to pay in advance. An example of this might be buildings insurance. And where an expense has been paid for in advance of the accounting period it relates to, this is an example of a prepaid expense. And a prepaid expense is a type of asset on the Statement of Financial Position resulting from a business making advanced payments for goods or services it has yet to receive. The important thing to remember is that where any income received or payments made are identified as falling outside of the accounting period they relate to, the financial statements for that accounting period will need to be adjusted accordingly. Let's look at all of this in a little closer detail, starting with accruals. As we've just seen, accruals can be one of two things. Income that has been earned in an accounting period but has yet to be received at the end of it, which is recognised as an asset, or expenses that have been incurred in an accounting period but that have not yet been paid at the end of it, which is recognised as a liability. Either way, it's money owing. Whether that's money owing to the business, such as rental income not yet received, or money owing from the business, such as an electricity bill not yet received or paid, 
or wages not yet paid from the business to its employees. Let's look at both of these types of accrual in a little more detail. Starting with accrued income. As we've seen, accrued income is income that belongs to an accounting period, but which has not yet been received. Let's suppose that we have an accounting period that runs from January to December. And our business has a client that owes £7,500 in commission for a three month period ending in January after our accounting period has ended. However, a bill for this commission has not yet been sent out or recorded in the accounts. As you can see, a proportion of this commission income for November and December belongs in our accounting period. So when preparing the financial statements for our accounting period, we need to account for this accrued income. That is, income which has been earned but not yet received. Unless there's information to state otherwise, we can assume that the commission was earned evenly over the three months between November and January. So the commission earned in November and December will be £7,500 divided by three months and multiplied by two, or two thirds of our £7,500, which is £5,000. And if we were to look at the journal adjustment required to enter this accrued income into the general ledger, £5,000 would be credited to a commission income account, which would be closed off and the balance transferred to the statement of profit or loss for our accounting period. And £5,000 will be debited to the accruals account. And once all the adjustments for accruals have been made, the balance will be transferred to the statement of financial position for our accounting period. Now we've looked at accrued income, let's look at an example of an accrued expense. An accrued expense is an expense that relates to an accounting period, but which has not yet been paid. To demonstrate, let's use the same accounting period that runs from January to December. If you've used materials or services in your business, you need to account for them in your books, whether or not you've already paid for them. And whilst preparing the financial statements, let's say we receive a gas bill in the next accounting period for £300, which covers the period December, January and February. As you can see, a proportion of this gas bill for December belongs in our accounting period. That is, gas was used in December that hasn't yet been paid for. Again, in situations like this, we can assume that the expense was used evenly over the three months. So the cost of one month's gas usage for December will be £300 divided by three months, which is £100. And again, if we were to look at the journal entry required to enter this into our accounts, this £100 will be debited to the gas account which would then be closed off with the total expense for the year being transferred to the statement of profit or loss for our accounting period. And £100 would be credited to the accruals account. And once all the adjustments have been made, the balance on the accruals account would be transferred to the statement of financial position for our accounting period. Now, let's look at prepayments. As with accruals, prepayments can also be one of two things. Income that has been received, but not yet earned, which is recognised as a liability, or expenses that have been paid, but that are not yet due, which is recognised as an asset. Either way, prepayments are money paid in advance. Whether that's money paid to a business, such as rental income received in advance, or money paid from the business, such as insurance paid in advance for the next year, or maybe broadband payments covering the next three months. Again, let's look at some examples. Starting with prepaid income. 
As we've seen, prepaid income is income that has been received in advance of the period it relates to. Let's again look at our accounting period that runs from January to December. And this time, let's assume our business rents out some property. The terms being that the tenant pays rent three months in advance. And in October, the tenant pays £2,050 in advance rent, relating to the months November and December in the current accounting period, and January in the next. When it comes to preparing the financial statements for our accounting period, this time the rental income relating to January will need to be removed from the income earned in the current accounting period, as it relates to the next accounting period. Let's assume we're told that there has been an increase in the monthly rent for the next calendar year, and that the amount relating to January is £700. So with no additional calculation to make this time. If we were to look at the journal adjustment required for the current accounting period, we would reduce the rental income account by £700, which would be a debit, as this amount has been received in the current year, but the income relates to the next. The total rental income received over the year can then be calculated and recorded in the statement of profit or loss for our accounting period. And we also need to record £700 of prepaid income in the prepayments account. This amount is a liability at the end of the accounting period, as the business has not earned the income yet. And once all the adjustments have been made, the balance on the prepayments account would be transferred to the statement of financial position for our accounting period. The final area left to cover is for prepaid expenses. A prepaid expense is an expense that has been paid in advance during one accounting period, but belongs to the next. Let's bring up our accounting period once again, that runs from January to December. This time, let's assume that in November, our business makes a £450 advance payment for broadband services, relating to December within our accounting period and January and February in the next accounting period. So when it comes to preparing the financial statements, the broadband payments relating to January and February will need to be removed from the expenses relating to the current accounting period, as they relate to the next. Once again, assuming that charges are incurred evenly over the period, the amount of the broadband expense in January and February can be calculated as £450 divided by 3 months multiplied by 2, or 2 thirds of our £450, which is £300. And if we were to look at the journal adjustment required for the current accounting period, we would need to reduce the broadband expense by £300, as this amount has been paid in the current accounting period but relates to the next, and to decrease an expense we need a credit. The total broadband expense for our accounting period can then be recorded in the statement of profit or loss, and we also need to record £300 of prepaid expenses in the prepayments account. And this amount is an asset at the end of the accounting period, as the business has paid for a service that hasn't yet been delivered to it. And once again, once all the adjustments have been made to the prepayments account, the balance would be transferred to the statement of financial position for our accounting period. I hope you found this video helpful. And thanks for watching.